Coach Steve Seth Shankweiler, offensive line coach, USF coach. A couple weeks done in practice. Uh, what are your thoughts on our offensive line right now heading into the last stage of practice? Well, you know, I think it's probably we're typical most most position groups this time of year. We're, you know, the heat, uh, we're beating on each other a little bit. We're, we're probably a little sluggish, but uh, we've made a lot of progress. Uh, we got a long way to go, you know, that is. I, you know, you're always going to, till the last practice before your bowl game, things aren't going to be perfect. But, uh, but we have made a lot of progress. We've created some depth and, uh, and created some good competition. We got some guys having to compete to keep their jobs and earn a job, which is really, really the, since we've been here, it's the first time in the offensive line we've been able to do that. Now, there's a couple of roster moves which uh, kind of caught a little news with uh, Mark Popek, a senior, the trenches started tackle moving inside. Well, um, you know, <laughs> I, I, would, I would say nothing's ever set in stone. You know, I, I think that was a, a move we wanted to make to see what's the best five, what's the best combination. I think that we're probably during the course of the year, you're going to see several guys play more and more positions. And, uh, you know, and Mark, Mark's done a good job there. Darrell Williams has done a good job of tackle. Uh, you know, we still have... We still have another week before we're set exactly what we're going to do, and then obviously during the course of the year things can change. But right now, like I said, I, I'm just I'm pleased with the work habits of the kids. They're you know they're trying, uh, they're they've gotten better. Now they you know there are times they're not as good as I want them to be, but but it's we we've made a lot of progress. So moving guys in and around that's good for that's good right. for for them. How how is uh, Popek uh, taken to guard? I mean, he hasn't played there in a couple of years. Well. You know, what? there's some things that, that, that are obviously exactly the same as they are time. Uh, but and there but there are some things that are different and you know the learning curve is 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 some but not significant and uh, and he's he's done fine. Okay, now what have you seen as much out of Daryl Williams to put him into uh, right now listed as a starter at tackle? Well, Daryl's very athletic. Daryl's uh Daryl's very bright kid, very athletic. He changes direction very well. Uh, he has grown a lot since he's been here, both physically and, and maturity-wise. Uh, you know, we signed him, he was 250 pounds, now he's 290. And, you know, and still can move like he did at 250. So I, I think the future is very bright for him, and, uh, and he's going to play a significant role, whether as a starter or whatever. He's he's going to be he's going to be on the field a lot. Excellent. Now let's go back to the center, Mark uh, Austin Reader. What have you seen of him now through the training camp? You know he's he's a, he's a tough nut. Uh, the defensive guys hate him. They, they, he's he's a little bit of a throwback kind of guy. You know he'll he'll get after him pretty good and. Does a great job of using his hands. Uh, really has a natural base. Uh, is never on the ground. Uh, keeps his feet well. And uh, I think as he gets experience, and again, he has a play. But as he gets experience, uh, as the year goes, I think the kid's got a chance to be a really, really good player. Now, uh, moving next to him, uh, Danis Essenar. What have you seen him in his last fall camp here? Danis is Danis, man. I mean, he's going to go 100 miles an hour. And uh, but Danis is. Uh, his leadership and his, his toughness, uh, you know, is such a value to what we're doing. Okay. Now moving to the other side, Pierce Eatman, now he's got another full year in the system. What kind of development have you seen out of him? You know, Q's got Q's got much better run blocking. Uh, he's, he's, you know, pass blocking will always be, he has to be, he has to be very disciplined because he's, he's not, he doesn't have the quickness that maybe a Mark has or, or Daryl has, but he's got the length. And he's such a good student of the game that he studies it. He's very coachable. He tries to do it exactly the way you want. And, you can connect with and, you know, for that reason, that's, see, that's why he started you know, 12 games for us as a redshirt freshman, because he, he takes coaching very well. Now, last year we had a bunch of redshirt defensive linemen who are all in the two deep, uh, Brynjol Gunnarsson, Max Lang. What are you seeing from those guys? Well, they're redshirt freshmen. Uh, they're not... They're not uh, game ready by any stretch, okay. but they are all talented. They're all, they've cre like I said earlier, they've created depth and they've created competition. I mean, even the guys like 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 a Q Eatman, you know what? I mean, Max Lang is doing some really good things. I mean, so those guys have come along enough that they are pushing the older guys. Not that we have a lot of older guys, but but they're they're pushing the guys that, that have played, and they have made really really good strides. Uh, 
during the spring and, and, and during uh, camp. Now, Lawrence Martin, you had him through spring camp, yeah. and now you're here. How's his development? He, he's coming. He's coming. I, I think people, you know, Lawrence didn't play last year. Right. You know, he, he sat out last year. And so, you know, the, again, the, 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 the jump from junior college football, then not playing, to BCS football, you can't just rely on your athletic ability. And he has got all the athletic ability in the world, but it's, he is going to be a continuing growth as, as the year goes. Um, Lawrence can be a really good player. He's just got to continue to buy in fundamentally to what, what we're teaching. And he is, he is he's, he's better fundamentally than he was in the spring. And I think once he gets comfortable with that, I think you're going to see a guy play pretty fast. A guy, a guy's going to play pretty fast and aggressive. Are there any of the guys who are pushing those two deep guys that we have mentioned? You know, th those are really the guys. I mean, it's 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 the same basic group we had in the spring. Right. And uh, you know, like I said, it's fun to coach when there's a little competition. There. You know, you can't just uh, you can't go out there and coast. Right. So, uh, but it's, it's been fun so far. With less than two weeks before the first game, what do you want to see in practice the most of these guys? What are you trying to work on the most? Well, now? we got, it's, it, 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 everybody gets tired of me saying this, but it's a, it's a constant battle fundamentally. Lower pad level, better use of your hands, those kinds of things. It's, uh, you know, I, I think those are critical. The, the thing you got to remember, you're asking kids to play on an unnatural position naturally. And so, you know, it's 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 always that's why it's the hardest position to coach. It's not so much because of the assignments, it's because of maintaining the fundamentals it takes to move a three hundred pound man. So that's what we'll always continue working. Thanks a lot coach. You bet. Okay.